I noticed one of the trending videos is how to connect your website to, to N8N. So I want to say don't. And this is why. I mean, you can. But I think there's an advantage to this pattern. With, with Superbase, we can connect our website to N8N indirectly. So with Superbase, you get two environment variables, anonymous key, and then you get the, the... And with that, you can create a JWT that then allows you to do things by inserting rows into the table. Now, you can also get permissions from JWT from, from the Superbase as well to then get a vault or a, a password and keys and so forth. So you could connect N8N without exposing your credentials or without having to worry about having this kind of back-end layer. But what I want to say is, let's think about this. Here's a front end to a website. And when I click generate, it's going to go and write a row to the table. And this is really easy to manage the permissions because we're just having Superbase have the permissions to insert to that table. Now, in this case, this this is anonymous, but it's actually anonymous auth, so saving your, your credentials, or not even your credentials, your session. So now we have a person who comes to the website and they're allowed to use the anonymous keys to write to a table. But then when we do that, what's happening is we're triggering an N8N event. So back here, they did a card request, because I'm great at naming things. And then back here, I said, hey, when someone writes database, webhooks, okay. Actually, there's another way to get there too. And there's a webhook here. And that webhook says when someone writes to the table, we're going to do on insert only, we're going to then hit our N8N. Now, at that point, this guy gets triggered. And that, that particular request comes in and then it gets taken in over here and does the work. Well, it does the work. It's updating the database along the way. So it changes the step or status to running. It changes the status to done. And then each one of these steps in between will do a little bit more to trigger updates. So in this case, it's writing to a new row in the database. So every time the table card request gets started, it kicks off that process. And then that process makes card examples for the user to see in the user interface. Now, how does it do that? Well, if we go back to the code, we can see that there's another moment where I say, okay, this person has permission to subscribe to the real-time events. So let's see if we can find it. Okay, so in here, you'll see that we subscribe to the card events. So Superbase has this built into its system with, with row-level security as part of that. So right away, I could have my UI listen for events to a channel on Postgres change uh, on update card request. So this is where it looks for card request uh, updates, changes in the status I was showing you. But if I go to card examples, I think that's what I call it. Somewhere in here, it's probably listening to that as well. So on a card example, it will do something here where it's potentially in one of these looking for the rows to be added. So any type of event it's listening to there and so forth. Postgres changes on update. So you can see there's different areas in here that's listening. And so my point overall is that we don't have to connect Superbase or N8N to our app. We connect our app to Superbase which we're doing anyways. We get authentication, both anonymous and, and, and regular. Uh, we get uh, the ability then to insert or do things with the database that are have built-in security or row-level security when we set that. And then we get this really, really fast interface for doing what I just showed. I'm gonna even show it working with chat later because it's really that fast where the person sends a chat message by writing to a table, N8M responds, and then we see the results just like that. Um, all right, so that's my answer to that question.